Hi, I'm Ankur Chara, and I cover the application and security market here at Spiren. I'll be talking about our Avalanche Next. As mentioned earlier, we just launched this this week. So we are very excited about it, and I would like to share all the uh, goodness of Avalanche Next with you and also give you an opportunity to play with it. Thanks to our uh, team, they have set up systems for you so you can play with it uh, after we are done with the presentation here. So how many of you know what this is, a picture of? The satellite. Hubble satellite. Yep, Hubble Space Telescope. And many of you might know that there was an issue earlier, uh, about like, you know, 20 years ago. And there was documented that project management did not recognize the value of independent testing. Here is a great lesson for us to learn that it's important to do testing. That is one thing, but there's another aspect. It's important to do independent testing because at times when we do the testing, we have to make sure it, it is independent so that you can find the flaws. Otherwise, you might have that you know, a block because you're thinking from a perspective which might not be completely uh, neutral. Anyways, so when we talk about testing, first question comes up, where do I start? What do I look at? So you can see there are quite a few RFCs which you can you know, look at as 2544, uh, you know, 3511, 2889. And there are quite a few different RFCs which you can look at based on what technology, what kind of system you're testing. These are great starting points for testing. But you have to go beyond that if you want to truly understand how a device or an infrastructure is going to behave in production environment. So for that, you need to see why it is, is it important? Because when you look at any infrastructure, any network element, there will be data sheet claims which are true, but they're not representative of your production environment. So you have to do realistic testing to compare it and see how it's going to react in your environment, in your you know, target scenario, so that you can expect and anticipate when it goes into production, there are no you know, gotchas. So just to give you an example, there was a public test which was done by an independent uh, lab. And that public test, it was comparing four different vendors of entry-level firewall. So these are just examples, vendor A, B, C, and D. And entry-level firewalls, data sheet claims are written at the bottom. And these are just basic performance uh, criteria which they had mentioned. So as you can see, it varies. These are all entry-level firewalls from different vendors. And it varies from 200 megs to 1.5 gigs. So if you have to make a decision based on just this data, you might pick one based on cost or based on performance or you know, balance it out in a way and say, OK, I might go with vendor B. You know, you might pick one. So, which might be a starting point, but you'll see as we go along in this uh, public test what we found out when we started doing, you know, realistic testing. So, here it shows what were the data sheet claims of those four vendors. And here was the actual performance. So you can see in some cases, the performance was actually higher than what the data sheet claims were. So data sheet claims were based on certain configuration, which were maybe more uh, stressful on the system. Or uh, maybe there was some enhancement on the hardware or software, which got better performance. But for some cases, it was slightly lower. So the picture still looks OK if you picked any one of those vendors based on the initial number. But then we started enabling more things. Because when you go into a realistic environment, if you set up a firewall as a switch, it's definitely going to perform much better. We started enabling you know, IPS. So we looked at the data sheet number of IPS. So in that case, vendor A and B did not have any uh, data sheet numbers to go by. So we did not have any numbers. So here you see the yellow band shows uh, vendor C and D. Those were the claimed numbers for uh, IPS. And then when we ran the test, vendor B did support IPS functionality. So we were able to uh, look at, you know, okay, this is the uh, performance. But if you look at C and D, 
those are the performance in uh, rightmost band. So C actually performed better than what it claimed. So it's pretty even in terms of what their claims were and what actual performance came out to be. But that was not so much the case for D. But if you look at D, it has the highest uh, you know, initial basic performance on the data sheet. And then we went on a step further. We enabled UTM functionality. So that starts putting even more pressure on the uh, you know, little device. And then you start seeing the performance. In this case, as you can see, C, to begin with, if I had gone by just the vendor data sheet claims, I might never have picked number D or number C. Uh, so now, after looking at this data, I might say, oh, you know what? Vendor C might be the best choice for my environment. Or if you're not using IPS, you might pick another one. If you're not using UTM functionality, you might pick another one. So at this point, you have much more information to make the right decision about what would be best in your production environment. Show us the vendors. Yeah, everyone so, would love to see which, which vendors those were. <laughs> yes, I know that would be interesting. So th there's a public test report, so I, it is available. And uh, you can go online. We can share those details with you at the end of the session. So uh, going into what are the security trends, now that we were talking about uh, firewall, IDS, UPS, uh, UTMs, I was at RSA Asia Pack, and one of the keynote session mentioned that until now, majority of the cyber attacks have been disruptive, like your website goes down and it does some sort of disruption, but more and more it's going to go towards destructive because many of the cyber attacks end up having uh, a physical impact they can do on uh, some hardware, on something, they can you know, access systems and change things, especially given the new trend where majority of systems are network connected. So it's hard to keep them off the grid and then that also opens it up for potential attacks and access. Uh, another uh, trend which we are seeing is there are more than a million apps, and there are new apps c coming all the time. And that creates a challenge for some of the uh, IT organizations saying that you need to replicate a certain amount of traffic which is going through my infrastructure, but that keeps on changing. Because the apps which I'm using on my smartphone majority of them did not exist a year ago. Or even if they existed, the version were at least three or four version behind. So things keep on changing on my, uh, you know, on the wire. Another thing is malware. We are seeing a lot of malware which is uh, being, you know, generated. One of the uh, reports mentioned that every day there is 74,000 new pieces of malware being discovered. Maybe not all of it is at a critical level, but that's the volume you are seeing. So quite a few of those uh, would be critical pieces of malware. <laughs> As you can see, that poses quite a bit of challenge when it comes to your uh, security infrastructure and security testing. So one of the classic question is, how much of security is enough? If you disconnect your entire network, it's really secure. You know, nobody can access it. But it's not productive. It does not do the job. So at times, you have to keep that in mind. And that's why the next question here is how to balance between performance and security. You can make it absolute secure by completely sealing it from everybody, but then you're sealing it away from your actual users as well. So you have to balance it out. And there are two aspects here. When you look at performance and security, it's also, uh, at times, performance is dependent on cost and security dependent on cost. So you have to look at how much is your budget and things like that. You need to balance those things out. Also, another aspect, as I mentioned, we have new apps and attacks coming all the time, like new malwares coming, new apps coming. So you have to have your latest database available, just like antivirus model. You, as soon as you look at uh, your, you know, you switch on your PC, your uh, antivirus goes and checks for the latest definitions, it downloads it so that you're protected. The latest definitions you have, the better chance you have of being protected against the new attacks which might be out there. Same thing applies to your application testing as well. I might have an app which came out with new version, but it might have vulnerabilities. So I need to be sure that I can you know, test with those on my 
environment. And there are quite a few apps which have much smaller, shorter shelf life. There might be an app for Olympics, which might come two months before the Olympics, and then it has another two months. So the entire life cycle of that app might be four to six months. So that condenses a lot of you know, uh, application life cycles for these numerous you know, millions of apps. So that also creates a challenge for having realistic traffic onto your, uh, on the wire so that you can test. If you have DPI systems in your environment, you need to be uh, testing your you know, application policies. You should be able to uh, see that, OK, if I'm sending this new app, does my DPI recognize it? And maybe there are some application decision, policy decision, which end up happening because of that. And it should be able to implement those. So with all of that background in mind, we would like to introduce Avalanche Next, which gets things from our Avalanche Commander, which is our uh, flagship solution for application and security testing, and also Studio Performance, which you, some of you might have seen earlier. And now what we are doing with Avalanche Next is we are bringing good things from both, and we are creating a new solution. And all the things which we have uh, understood, talk to our customers, talk to our uh, you know, other people, to the industry, to the labs, for more than a decade, now we can take all that information and create a product which has all that in mind. And then you can you know, build a new platform which can take it all the way further. So it's a very powerful, easy to use solution. And it also covers all of your application aware network aspects, as well as you know, malware, uh, security testing, vulnerability testing. You'll get a chance to look at it today. What's the pricing model on it? The pricing model on that, uh, we can uh, talk about that a little more. Right now, we have, uh, we'll be GAing it at the end of the month. So we are going to uh, you know, let you know after that. So, when it comes to the main aspects of Avalanche Next, we have security, realism, performance, and agility. So when it comes to security, you can find and fix vulnerabilities. So let's say you have a new firewall which comes into your uh, infrastructure, you can test that firewall. When it comes to realism, you should be able to realistically replicate your uh, traffic which you have on the wire. Just like I mentioned, there are new apps and attacks coming all the time. You should be able to uh, create those exact kind of mixes and send it through your uh, infrastructure to see how your systems react to that. On the performance side, from our existing Avalanche Commander solution, we had millions of uh, connections per second we could do high bandwidth. That aspect comes into Avalanche next. So you can do high performance, line rate, uh, bandwidth testing and you can do high performance connections per second with like multi-million connections per second within a single box, single system. Also, last but not the least is agility. We are seeing this trend of new apps, attacks, malware coming all the time. We have created a way to deliver that to our customers directly. So if you're using our solution, you can uh, be assured that it automatically goes, if it is internet connected, it has the latest definitions. So it automatically downloads it, and it can uh, have that even without new software versions. So yes, we have new software versions for uh, a new feature set. But when it comes to the database of apps, attacks, and malware, you'll always be current, always be up to date. So on the security side, just to go a little more in detail, that there are, you know, testing for perimeter testing, like thousands of attacks you can send and see if your firewall stops that. You can do fuzzing as well with this solution. So we are bringing that aspect from our studio security platform, and now you can do fuzzing with Avalanche Next. And we have quite a few protocols which we have supported there. For example, you can do HTTP, <coughs> and you can look at zero-day vulnerabilities uh, to see if your systems are robust and resilient. Also, you can uh, emulate uh, malware-infected host. So whenever, let's say, uh, one of the hosts gets infected with malware, what does it do r right after it gets infected? It might look for other hosts 
in the network. Then once it finds a host, it might uh, FTP to that host. And then it might transfer the content to that host. Then that might replicate again. So that is an infected host behavior. So with malware testing, you can do that. Realism. As I mentioned, that you need to be able to create realistic mixes. If I want to have the latest you know, Netflix, uh, the Skype app for iOS, for my Android device, for my PC, I can test with all those different variations of a single application, and I can see the impact of that on my infrastructure. Also, you can mix that with uh, attacks to see what's the, what are the security implications, what are the performance implications of that. On the performance side, high performance and scale, as I mentioned, we can do uh, multi-10 gig line rate uh, uh, bandwidth testing. We can also do uh, high performance connections per second testing with millions of connections per second. So sometimes uh, our customers ask that, hey, that's good for me to know that this is a reali realistic traffic mix which is going through the system. My DPI is able to recognize all of that, which is great. But I need to know what's the absolute maximum this system can handle. Just Tell me if uh, there is an event Monday morning, 9 a.m., and I'm expecting a million new connections per second at you know, that instant, can my system handle it? So we can do that kind of testing as well. On the agility side, as I mentioned, we have online uh, repository database of uh, apps, attacks, and malware. So that makes sure that you are always on the latest definitions which we have online. Also, it allows us to quickly deliver it to our customers as soon as we have new uh, updates for apps and attacks and malware. So what can you do with all these features? What are the kind of testing which you would do? You can validate application policies. As I mentioned, you have systems which might do like, uh, nowadays, given the trend, you might have marketing department doing something on Facebook in social media marketing. But then you also have uh, you know, YouTube plugins into Facebook. Then you might have YouTube for somebody who is just doing uh, some entertainment during lunch hour. And you want to have application policy to be able to differentiate between those. And you want to implement that. So those are the kind of test scenarios for application policy validation you can do. Also, you can benchmark performance. As I mentioned, you can uh, benchmark for what's the absolute maximum you can do. What's the maximum connections per second? What's the maximum bandwidth you can support? Well, how does uh, an attack impact your performance? So that goes into the validation of your network security. You can do fuzzing testing. You can do uh, attacks testing. You can do an audit of attacks. You can line up uh, you know, thousands of attacks and go one by one if you want to see which ones are stopped, which ones are not. Or you can combine them together with apps and do testing with that. So at this point, I would like to give you a quick demo of our uh, system. So at this point, I would like to invite our uh, engineering uh, manager, Paul East. Quick question, question actually. Yeah. For mid-sized customers, they might I want to buy something like this and have it full time, right? Do you have any programs where they could lease it or rent it for you know a week, two weeks, in terms yes. of testing applications and security policies? Yes, absolutely. So we also have uh, uh, professional services. So at times we have had many enterprise customers say that, hey, uh, we do not have all the footprint of the equipment which we will need for this testing. And we also uh, need expertise. Like not only the equipment, we also need expertise. Can you come in and look at our system and we are maybe doing a bake-off testing or we are doing a turn-up testing. Right. So can you come look at our uh, system, put together a test plan, come in with your equipment, come in with one of the experts and do the testing and at the end of it, you just give me a report so that I don't need to uh, learn something just for one time. So yes, we can do that. We, we have a professional services. So I actually work at a VAR. Now, do you allow VARs to purchase a device and leverage it for their customers, or do you want a fee per customer that they use it for? 
We do have uh, a rental uh, where you can just rent the equipment out and then you can use that for... What about purchase for from a VAR perspective? Yeah, you can do that as well. And then use it unlimited uses, unlimited customers? Yeah, yeah. yeah there, we can look at the details of how we have done it in the past for which channel. So yes, we can definitely look at those details, cool. absolutely. Just yeah. a question on like IPv6 in general, especially for testing. So not not just the security argument. I mean, there's a few things you can do with that, but mostly like you know dual stack testing. You know the sort of the mid plane of of like an IPv6 migration. Do you guys do any testing with that? Yes, we okay. do have uh, we do have that, uh, and uh, depending on what exact uh, use case you're talking about, it might be with our Spiren test center or Avalanche Next solution. So okay. depending on what use case you're talking about, we do have. Uh, IPv6, IPv4, dual stack sure. uh, aspect of testing. Because I think that would answer a lot of the questions that are out there right now, especially with IPv6, is you yeah. are essentially you know, running two networks. Yeah, so. exactly. And you know, transition technologies are always interesting. Th those are necessary for new technology to come in, right. but they're also tricky to uh, you know, roll out. Could you do something like port scan and compare whether IPv4 and IPv6 have the same ports open, so to mm -hmm. verify that the access lists on IPv6 are actually deployed, for example? So that one, we'll have to look into that, because right now we are more focused on the security testing of you know, you know, application attacks. So we could uh, maybe talk about right after we are done with this and see what exactly you're you know, looking at.